Good morning, good afternoon or good evening everybody and thank you very much for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Richard Smith and I'm Global Applications Manager here at Taylor Hobson. The application we'll be looking at is dealing with polymeric shaft seals and we'll be looking at twist or lead measurement and analysis. Again, thank you for joining and we'll now make a start with the webinar. So what is twist? Here are some of the many critical applications requiring twist analysis on shaft seals. In some cases, we're trying to stop oil from leaking out of a system. And in other cases, we're trying to stop the lubricant itself from being contaminated by dirt or dust, for example. This is an example of a crankshaft where we have a seal on this bearing and on this side we have oil and on this side we have air. And what we're concerned with is the lay, the features, the twist on this surface. And this is represented here, where in this case, the twist is such that the oil, the liquid is being retained within the system. If this isn't correct, we could get leakage or conversely, we could get uh, contaminants such as dirt or dust coming back into the oil. We also have to watch out in case the uh, the seals themselves run dry and then cause the, uh, the system to, to fail. So typically the analysed twist surface wavelength is less than 0.4 millimetres in line with the size of the lipped polymer seal. So here again is the same uh, same bearing with oil on this side, air on this side, and the seal. During the machining process, a single point tool can create macro lead on the surface, and that's represented by these lines here. The lead can have multiple start positions, and it can vary in pitch depending upon the, the process, the manufacturing process. Looking here at what we call micro lead, this is created by the grinding process after having done the turning process, for example. And what's happening here is that we are breaking up the, uh, the marks left by the turning process. So just looking at two examples here, what we have to consider is the rotational direction of the, uh, the bearing. And on the bottom here, if we're looking in this direction and the, uh, the bearing is turning clockwise, then the oil will be retained within the system. If the lead is in the other direction called left hand lead, again, we're still turning this clockwise. Uh, in this case, the oil will leak. If the oil retention is too aggressive, if there is too much uh, movement in this direction, then it's possible that this bearing uh, surface and the seal will run dry and cause a failure situation. Just having a look around the shaft, here we have an example of variations in twist. Twist is definitely present in this case, we've taken a roundness trace here and note the difference at the lobes. We can see less of an effect of the twist here and here. The twist is much more pronounced here and here. And the reason for this uh, is that the grinding effect here at these lobes is much stronger and will have removed the um, the effect of the periodic, the turning uh, process. 
Some shafts uh, are designed with specific uh, lip seal polish bands. This means that these are specially polished and uh, for taking the, the seals. So how do we measure twist? The traditional method is to measure twist by hanging a weighted, weighted string over the shaft and monitoring its movement as the shaft is rotated. If there is no twist present, the weight won't move. If twist is present, the weight will move in one direction or the other, dependent upon the rotational direction and the nature of the, of the twist. We're now going to take a look at a new method of quantifying twist on a shaft. This was developed and patented by Daimler AG and it uses a 3D map on the surface. And measurements can be taken with suitable talirond or talisurf instruments. In each case, it's important when doing this to make sure that the shaft being measured is very well aligned. So let's have a look at twist measurement. So before we measure twist, we need to think about the twist measurement strategy. And looking at the in the axial direction, the axial extent of the data needs to be sufficient to cover the area of interest. That's where the seal is going to contact the shaft. It should be greater than two millimeters and the measurement should contain no less than 4,000 data points. The data spacing required is half a micron. In the radial direction, data is taken in the axial direction using 72 traces, and these are spaced either at 5 degree or 0.5 degree intervals. And that means it will cover the full 360 degrees or 36 degrees. So we have two different situations here. The five degree spacing is used for measuring components with a low number of starts per revolution. That's less than 15. And the half degree spacing is recommended for measuring components with a high number that's greater than or equal to 15 starts per revolution. The measurement is taken using a two or a five micron diamond stylus. And we'll now have a look at the measurement itself. In this example, we're looking at a crankshaft and we're going to first of all align the crankshaft. So a measurement is taken here and at the top, and the crankshaft is aligned. After it's aligned, the first measurement is taken in the axial direction over the ceiling area. The shaft is rotated and another measurement is taken and so on. We're also able to measure other features on the crankshaft. And finally, we build up a 3D image for twist and also for other features as shown here. But in this example, we're concerned more with twist. So let's have a look now at how we analyze the twist. So twist analysis is designed to look at short wavelengths only. Although the surface might have long wavelength twist like features, these will be suppressed during the twist analysis. But if we want to see them, they can be usually seen on the surface by other means, such as autocorrelation within software such as TallyMap. The twist analysis will not show other features of the surface like component geometry or chatter marks. 
other measurements need to be made to analyse these features. So let's take a look at the twist analysis software. First of all, we enter the twist analysis settings. So we enter the wavelength that's shown on the left here. The default is between 20 microns and 0.4 millimeters. We also enter the evaluation length and remember to enter the part diameter. Once these settings have been done and the analysis takes place, we can see a representation of the surface here. This is a reconstructive surface along with the lead parameters. And we're gonna have a look at these parameters in a little bit more detail a bit later. Let's have a look at the twist analysis process. First of all, the measured surface is filtered to remove long wavelength components. This is because twist analysis is concerned only with short wavelengths. Next, the surface is analyzed to detect the dominant wavelengths in the axial direction. After this, a zero bandpass filter is applied to suppress wavelengths other than the dominant wavelength. And so this image here shows the dominant wavelength. This is using, this was a measurement taken on a uh, twist analysis standard. And you can see the effects of twist here. A Fourier transform is then applied to this to allow us to calculate the parameters that we've recently seen. Here again is the example of the zero bandpass filtered surface. But what we've done in this case is to use the autocorrelation function to enhance the display. And here we have a very, very clear visualization of the uh, twist pattern that exists on the surface. So let's have a look. We're looking here at a 3D representation of the surface and the parameters are all based around the angle of the twist, Hello. the wavelength Hello. shown there, yes. and the cross-sectional region here, Brilliant. and the depth of the twist. So the parameters all relate to angle, wavelength, cross-section and depth. And here are some of them. So the uh, lead angle we've just seen here. And this is a signed angle dependent upon whether the uh, twist is uh, right or left. The the depth is, has been shown here, and that's the height between the wave peak and valley. We'll also see, we've also seen the number of threads is counted as well. And the period length is the wavelength between two successive wave peaks and valleys, and that's the wavelength shown here. The cross-sectional area here is shown over a length of one period. This parameter here shows the uh, cross-sectional area per unit turn, and that is over the whole evaluation length. So that is uh, to multiply together the number of threads here, dg, by df, and that's the uh, single cross-sectional area. Here are some examples of how we may see 
uh, twist analysis on drawings. The things to point out here are that there are different uh, and different um, indications for turn surfaces and ground surfaces and also for the direction of the twist, whether it is turned right or whether it is turned left. So in summary, we've looked at some typical applications of twist. We've had a look at the traditional string method and we've had a look at twist analysis. We've had a look also at the method of measurement and the typical analysis settings and results used in twist. We've had a brief look at the process used for doing twist analysis and a quick look at some of the parameters and typical drawing indications. That brings me to the end of this webinar only to say that this webinar is part of a series of Bearings Solutions webinars. You can catch up with those and details of all the webinars that Taylor Hobson produce at www.taylor-hobson.com where you can also download a copy of the Bearings Applications brochure. Again, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.